we are here to speak with you about something you use every day. Or at least something we hope you use every day. Yes, we are here to talk about toilet paper. 2020 will forever be remembered as the year that COVID rocked the world. As lockdowns and stay-home orders were put in place, life as we knew it changed completely. And to prepare for those lockdowns that Tejas previously mentioned, a lot of people went to grocery stores to stock up on essentials. Naturally, there's a huge surge in the sale of hand sanitizers, masks, and PPE. But all of a sudden, toilet paper began to run out of stock everywhere. The shelves were wiped clean, and there was an undersupply. Wow, you're on a roll. Thank you. But wait a minute, what? How does that make sense? Why did toilet paper run out at the beginning of the pandemic? Well, it really doesn't. You'd expect that something would sell out, it would be something that would slow or stop the spread of COVID. But toilet paper does nothing of that sort. And while it is comforting to think that people just care that much about their personal hygiene, it doesn't justify how toilet paper became one of the most sold items in March in terms of overall dollars when it is usually around the number 25 spot. Believe it or not, this nationwide issue started due to just a few people. When presented with the idea that an invisible enemy is lurking behind every corner and an indefinite lockdown has been declared, some were quite frankly overwhelmed. And when we, specifically our amygdalas, which are the fear centers of our brains, are confronted with such a large issue, we panic and act irrationally. For example, hoarding toilet paper when there's actually no reason to do so. But at this time, COVID was not the only contagion at play. So was the behavioral contagion. The behavioral contagion is a concept in social psychology that states humans often mimic each other's actions. In the world of television, the laugh track was added by TV producers in order to instill a sense of joy and sweeten up jokes. Of course, this is nothing new. In Shakespeare's time, he had professional clackers, people placed in the audience in order to applaud at the right moment in order to encourage those around them to do so as well. This subtle form of emotional manipulation has been going on forever. If you think your emotions aren't being affected right now, from canned laughter to biased news feeds and powerful disinformation campaigns, think again. So now we have even more people hoarding toilet paper, but it's not the entire population. Okay, so let's say you go to the grocery store to buy some toilet paper and you need five rolls for your household. But since toilet paper is in hot demand, there are only eight rolls left on the shelf. You know that this might be one of the last times in a while that toilet paper will actually be in stock. So you buy all eight rolls. And then a mole walks in the store to buy some toilet paper. And let's say he really needs this toilet paper, but there's none for him. Who is to blame? Is it you or the person before you? Or was it the person before them? Well, it's probably the first person's fault. It was their actions that led to this chain reaction of selfishness and caused me some personal problems. The same goes for other circumstances surrounding COVID. When we choose not to wear a mask or not to socially distance, it might be more comfortable for us, but in turn, it endangers those around us. However, this is not a new phenomena. There are numerous cases where humans in society act out of their own self-interest, which has caused problems for others. This is called the tragedy of the commons, and it was coined by American ecologist Garrett Hardin in 1968. Let's take another example. So today we're all here to listen to different talks by some amazing speakers. I mean, given that this event is three hours long, the organizers have budgeted us, uh, budgeted us around seven to 15 minutes. But what if the mole and I feel like our issue is the most important and the most engaging, and we need 30 minutes to really get our point across? So we carry on for those 30 minutes. And at the end of our talk, we're happy. But where does that leave the rest of the speakers now in short time? Where does that leave you, the audience, now missing out on the ideas they were about to share? Amol and I would get what we want, but it would be at the expense of everyone else here. The tragedy of the common occurs when few people act selfishly when there are limited resources and everyone else is left to face the repercussions. In this case, time is that limited resource and Tejas and I will be the selfish people. Beyond TEDx and toilet paper, we can see the tragedy of the commons at play when we look at some of the greatest problems facing society today. Antibiotics. When we use them for mild illnesses that they aren't actually needed for, we allow resistant strains of bacteria to develop, which in turn causes harm for others. One person gets better faster while it puts others at risk for a stronger and more deadly variant of that illness. Deforestation. To build infrastructure in human settlements, we cut down trees and deplete the Earth's natural biodiversity. For the short-term benefit of development and oftentimes profit, we end up damaging, we damage 
ecosystems necessary to all forms of life on our planet. Carbon emissions, big companies and corporations are constantly prioritizing efficiency over environmental sustainability. And we see the impacts of that through air quality and global warming. Few people are getting rich while generations to follow will feel the burning consequence, consequences of their actions. Put simply, whenever a small group benefits at the collective's detriment, there is the tragedy of the commons. Okay, that got pretty serious. So how do we solve some of the greatest problems plaguing humanity? Currently, we rely on governmental or institutional regulations to keep us in check. Think of the toilet paper and hand sanitizer limit at your local grocery store, or the regulation of other common pool resources such as fisheries, forests, and underwater basins. Well, can't people just revisit the stores and exceed the limit of a certain common pool resource? Of course, and that's why this isn't the most efficacious solution. Thankfully, we have another solution that's simpler. Which is? You. Me? How can I alone solve the tragedy of the commons? Well, not just you, but me, everyone here in the audience, and everyone on our planet. We are the solution. The innate greed and need for self-preservation instilled in us from birth is what brought about such an issue. So the only logical solution is for us to end what we started. And as we enter a world with deteriorating climate, an uncertain economy, and a divisive political environment, it is more important than ever to act with integrity. We need to be aware of our thoughts and actions. We need to be aware of what's best for us versus what's best for everyone. We are the solution. So the next time you don't want to walk five extra steps to throw something away, think of where that waste ends up. The next time you don't want to wear a mask, think of whom you might transmit the virus to. And the next time you want to stock up on toilet paper, imagine a mole who still really needs that toilet paper just walked into the store. Thank you for listening to our TED Talk.